There we go. <laughs> uh, and we are live for Gildificon. Uh, we're live for Gildificon. And we are here with the panel called the EU Crew, which is weird because we do have a couple of imposters to this because we have three people who are not actually part of the EU. But, you know, we allowed them to, to come on here and share their stuff as well, I guess. But uh, so my name is Jen. I am the moderator for today. Uh, we are, uh, this is Guildcon and this is the EU crew. What we're going to do is we're going to go through, have these authors introduce themselves and talk about, you know, to say which series we have that are out in Lit RPG and everything. And then we will, um, and if they want to say where they're from, so that we know and we can either if people have traveled or anything like that. While they're going through and doing their introductions, uh, please drop any comments or questions into the chat. And after they get through the introductions, we will go into questions. Uh, so please, questions, comments, anything that you'd like to drop or ask of these guys. We're here for the next hour or so. So I'm going to just start with Dimi. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm Dimitris. Uh, I come from Greece and I live in Germany, which is definitely in the EU. Uh, I've written three series so far. The Apocalypse series is the one with, um, with the Corgi in the covers. Uh, another called uh, The Boy Who Killed God. Uh, and as Dan Masters, a series uh, called I Am Zeus, and I run 500 Publishing, a company that brings uh, German Lead RPG. Ah, yeah. There it is. Jazz is showing his book. Aww. Jazz has got them all. <laughs> hey, Jazz. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah. Hey, dude. All right. Hey. Uh, so, Don? You're next. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously I'm Dawn. I um, live in Lancashire in the UK. Um, I've written quite a few series, uh, mostly Patera and Space Seasons, which <laughs> Jez has obviously got as well. Jez is like our little um, book pro. He's, he's our Vanna White. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite funny. So yeah, <laughs> so I, I do tend, I like to write a different, different kind of um, book for the genre, really. I like more sci-fi stuff, so that's... <laughs> That's me. Uh, Kel? Uh, hello, I'm, I'm Kel. I'm from, from Norway. I, I usually write by the name Guillotine Chan, but I forgot to write on it, but I said my author name in here. So I, 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 I've outed myself. Oh. Right. I, 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 I've, I've ruined my own secret identity if I'm ever going to have one. But then again, I'm too much of an attention the, the seeker anyway, so it's, it's fine. Uh, so far, just on Royal Road. Hope to change that. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can do I've, it. Written, I've written, I've, uh, I'm working on two series at the moment, but I've written three. First one is called Interstellar Warlock, which is meant to, I wanted to take a warlock and put him in space and, and nice. have him join with a bunch of queer outlaws so they could take down space Amazon. That was, that was, uh, that was the story of that one. I write the two series I'm writing concurrently. One I'm writing by myself. It's called The Sovereign Swarm, but by, by a young lady who is reincarnated as a as a, a apocalyptic swarm. It's very ethical, very mm -hmm. nice. And the other one is called Galatea, and it's a story about a guy who is given a new life as a pseudo Victorian lady, and he has to <laughs> he has to deal with. Gender, right? yeah, just, that's um, quite a lot to do with flower, flower arrangements and embroidery and stuff. <laughs> he, he, he because he, he wants to be a great adventurer. He wants to fight, but he can't. He has a lady class. He has to learn the, the noble art of watercolors and pastels. It's great. Nice. Uh, so my goal as an author has been is becoming more and more to like highlight gender stuff. You know non-binary fighter and all that which is not the easiest on royal road no you get, yeah you get you get you get it's very easy to get hate bob so that's why one of the reasons i'm on here so i could spread i could chill i mean i mean promote yes promote and get to know us as well <laughs> so i work i work with uh, on galatea with uh, my co-author black leaf so we can get that afab perspective so it's it's great wonderful stuff that's me yay okay. <laughs> Thank oh. you. 
So Jez. Oh, uh, hi everybody. I'm Jez Caggio, uh, as opposed to my audio books, which all call me Hez <laughs> just for shits and giggles. Um, yeah, I wrote uh, Brightblade and the Underverse series, uh, Age of Stone and the Rise of Mankind. And You're not going to show your books? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <got me>. Neither <laughs> of them. You both yourself. Get the top shelf on mine. <laughs> I, just, I don't think it, <laughs> You're showing it everyone else. Like, there you go. go. <laughs> there we go. Hey, that's more like it. <laughs> well, um, so yeah, I... I'm up in God's country, up near Newcastle. I'm up at uh, a place called South Shields. It's a bit civilised, as opposed to a certain weirdo that is definitely that way, who <laughs> lives in Sunderland. Yeah, because Sunderland, it, it's a strange place. You know, they really, really like their sheep there as well. We've all heard the stories. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to nip this in the bud. We are not going to be asking anyone about their sheep preferences. <laughs> So, um, and just as a note, guys, if you want to drop any questions, feel free to. And uh, we're going to go to, uh, you're done, Jez, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll, come, we'll come back to you. Uh, <laughs> Kevin or Kev? Hi, I'm Kevin Sinclair. And I wrote the Condition Evolution series, um, the Sesmiel Courts. And my newest series is God of the Feast. Um, no, the newest series is Creations B, and the first book is God of the Feast. Now there's a ninety-nine cent seal on at the moment. Just if you know, if you walk up by, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I live in Sunderland, which has no sheep, surprisingly, unlike yeah. South Shields, which has a lot of sheep and banjos. That's all I'm saying. All in his garden. Oh, why did we put you guys next to each other? I don't know. You know me. You know me. Why <laughs> only, only, only good reasons. For the best <laughs> reasons. I mean, it would be torture forever who is in between I, I, them. So, I, Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> so, so to, you know, in danger of interrupting here, but I have to ask, because there's so many Brits here, I hope that none of you have hard feelings. I know that there's a thousand years since we pillaged you all. <laughs> oh, but then again, you did Imperials very recently, so I'm sure we can call it quits. Yes, no hard feelings. You both just came over here. I hope we can be friendly. And if it is you over here, you kill friendly, we just blame the people home with friends. you, and we were just glad of it. You know, we were just like, look, stop before you. You were leaving on long boats, and we were chasing you, going, don't forget these fuckers. We want rid of them as well. <laughs> I mean, take, really, take, it's, you know, we, we did you a favor, is what I'm saying. We, we, we. You know, as, as as we all know, when you go and burn and conquer, you 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 do a favor to the populace of that planet, the other players. That's 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 how it works. To be fair, Sorry. it might explain a great deal about when we as Brits go on holiday. Now we seem to have sort of adopted that as our default mode. We just go there and get drunk everywhere and burn the place down. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we learn from you. A lasting legacy. Okay. Actually, Why not? <laughs> We actually do have a couple of questions, so I'm going to get started on this. Um, apparently, there's no hard feelings about Norway invading UK and whatever, and they just took people that they didn't want. It works. So we learn something new every day. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, what book are you working on next, but I'm not going to just set it to Dawn. I'm going to put it to everyone, of course. So, uh, but we are going to start with Dawn. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> You can blame James for this. Um, yeah, thanks, James. <laughs> um, I kind of took a bit of a break for like personal reasons. I had a lot of house problems last the last year, so I've had a bit of a break for like twelve months or so. Uh, my plan is uh, I've almost finished the next book of Space Seasons, but I've also been working in the background on a few other things that will hopefully launch next year. So that's my plans. <laughs> Finish Space Seasons because it's been a while. <laughs> and it's not fair to not finish it, so. Okay. Uh, Demi? Uh, I think I also had a, like a, a break of like a, a year almost, uh, not writing. I recently started writing again. I think it's the first book of the new series or like maybe the, the first arc, which is uh, yeah, title pending. Uh, physics of the apocalypse something like that so anyway the the, the mc is a kind of a, 
and Neil deGrasse Tyson personality that gets thrown into apocalypse during the Oktoberfest with everything that uh, this entails. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it will be some time until I until I bring this out because I, I would like to, you know, have at least three titles under the series. But this is what I'm working on now. Okay. Uh, Kev. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm still. I, I like. I, I think we all are joining the club. Oh, hey, we took a break until recently. I've been. I've been dealing with oh, mental, <laughs> mental health things this last year. So I went from writing like a new chapter every day, and then suddenly it was like months of silence. Uh, I then had the starting realization that I got more followers, and then when I started writing new chapters, I started losing them again. I was like, that's, that's, that's weird. It's like, okay, what do you want here, people? Uh, but uh, I'm working primarily on Galatea right now, in addition to Sovereign Sword, just uh, getting back in the saddle. I just had them, uh, I just had a main character go through a, a monster pageant. It's like a dog show, but you have a little inbred wyvern instead, because Victorians and animal breeding is, you know, good times. We had to do a little, little animal show, I had to like yeah. do a good time. And there was Pokemon battles, because, you know, why, why not? not? It's, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's, I'm, I'm personally working on my own two series. I want to get Galatea to like the finishing point where I'm like, now I can actually publish it. Woo! So that's, that's where I am, instead of just having it in Royal Roads. So that's my present new book goals. Okay. Uh, Kevin? Mm -hmm. What are you... Uh, are you... I totally thought you were going to go to Jazz. I'm totally... I know. Totally <laughs> wow. Well, uh, what are you currently uh, working on? What am I doing? I am, I am working on God of the Feast Four, Creation to be in four. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And... Um, <clears throat> a couple of other things on the side, but that's the that's the main project at the minute. On the side. <laughs> What's that? They're the best on the side of the best ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and Jazz. Um, I've got my omnibuses, uh, basically the, the third omnibus launches in the next couple of weeks, uh, Underverse 7 launches the 6th of December, uh, Rise of Mankind 4 launches the beginning of March, and 5 in June. I've got a couple of other side projects on because I like to be busy, and because I have to spend all day with, uh, this, this <laughs> bum here, and God, <laughs> why is it back to front, I mean, Jesus, and that bum there. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so basically, uh, I, I ended up speaking to uh, to Dawn and Kev quite a lot, so they badger me to keep working. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. Dimmy basically comes in every so often, joins the group, and goes, "Why are you not working?" So yeah. I've just sort of taken the hint, really. What What are you doing today? Oh, fine. I'll just work. See if I care. We never stop working. <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah. Because I have two small children, and if I don't work, then I have to go and look after the kids. So. That is the okay. true secret to writing a great amount of words every day is having no alternative. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, Don has been around for a while. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, just a bit. So, um, and but Angel has you to thank to show him the way. Thanks, Angel. So, uh, so now I'm gonna go bring this back to the fact that you guys are in another country. What, um, what challenges or struggles did you encounter as an author who like, you know, pu getting yourself published or getting yourself out there? Uh, Cause I know that Amazon with a lot of stuff, I mean, they are UK, but they do UK and US, but uh, after, like, I know we did have a couple of the Canadian authors talk about how they had struggles with some stuff as well. So, um, if anyone wants to jump in on this, uh, I can start. I okay. don't too much background noise for some reason. Fake fall surfing, but uh, uh, if it's intolerable, let me know. But uh, what I was going to say is that uh, uh, one of the harder things is that lit RPGs haven't yet fully come to Norway, so culturally there isn't really that much of a precedent yet. So, for example, trying to do trad publishing, publishing here with this would be significantly harder. I mean because there's like there's no real niche for it yet both of the consumer base and everything so i would have to go through amazon and uh, i haven't tried yet because of uh, well 
oh, being in another country difficulties, but I'm sure there will crop up more. But that's just the onset difficulties of like, I have to work with a global audience instead of trying to score goals in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that in that when I first started out, I didn't know anybody else outside of American authors as well. So for me, it was a case of I fully believed that only this, the genre only exists in America, essentially. So when I went through the Amazon self-publishing route, then launched, then actually met people that were over here and realized that that represent right there was literally about four miles away from me. It was very, very weird, but very nice as well. Uh, yes, and Paul, we are going to be taking over Canada, but you're not supposed to warn them. It's okay, they'll apologize for it. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I'll I'll, I'll go next. Yeah. Uh, for me, there's there's a couple of the issues I think with like the states being the biggest market is um, obviously there's a bit of a, a language barrier between the UK and the US. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of things that people will say that we or we say that they just don't get um, on that side. And it can be the tiniest thing that will trip them up. Just the same as us, you know, it's like things people say in the States that we don't always automatically know exactly what it is. Um, other than that, it's the time zone as well, obviously. I always get emails like at 10 o'clock at night about something that I really need to answer. And it's like, ugh, I have to I have to get on the computer at like 10 just to <laughs> just to answer an email. <laughs> uh, Demi or Kevin? Uh, for me, it's uh, because, I, because I live in, in Germany. Uh, it is, uh, we have issues with the audiobooks because uh, we, I cannot go directly. I cannot publish my audiobooks directly with uh, ACX with Audible. I have to go through someone else because uh, because that's that's how it is in Germany. And I mean, apart from that, uh, of course, uh, there is no one here to speak little PG with. And even if it was, I I would rather not do it in German. And it's also uh, even writing in English for me because you know Europe is. Many many languages. My my mother tongue is Greek. Uh, English is my second. And German is my third. But I need to write in English. And you know when, uh, like writing my first books, it was I was very much in the state of you know ignorance is bliss. Like uh, I'm writing, I think I'm good, and it's going good. But then I'm I'm not gonna mention any uh, little busy authors. Let's let's say uh, when I read uh, Abercrombie, and I read how fucking good he writes and i'm like you can never write this good you know it's not it's not your language you can never write ever, ever anything this good so you get a little self-conscious about your skills but it's yeah i think it's it's part of uh it's part of the process right even if you if you work with uh, with wood you would find some difficulties but <clears throat> if you stick around long enough you will overcome them it's just another uh, another hurdle to to overcome over time. Yeah, that's me, Kev. I almost talked and I was muted. Uh, so, uh, and Kevin, right? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't talk. You didn't talk about this. No. I, okay. I, <laughs> it's not too bad in the UK, but there's, there isn't a market like there is in the US still. Um, I think Germany's a pretty well um, rounded market for lit RPG, but it's quite hard here. I mean, I think I do better in Australia and Canada than I do in the UK with book sales. And uh, the US is by far the biggest market for it at the moment. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is like because I'm English, people expect us to be able to speak English like really well, and it's just, it's it's just a huge like liability for for most of us. It's, uh, <laughs> um, but we try, we try our best, don't we, Jez? We do. I, <laughs> I'll just add into that one. Basically, in the northeast where we are, it's traditionally sort of, um, it was very heavy in the mining and shipbuilding and stuff like that. The, as of late, there's been more of a sort of an upsurge in technology and IT-based stuff. But it was never traditionally that. Growing up, I mean, I'm 40, what year? I'm 42. So growing up, it was a case of, you know, we were told over and over again, that you know, real men don't 
don't write. Real men don't do this. You don't do that. You fight in the pub and you, you work in like solid jobs and you do physical things. You don't do anything cerebral at all. And that going through school was very much a case of this is, you know, it, it, they, they tell you, oh, yes, try and get a good job or whatever. But you won't. You'll just work and you'll do this. And we were raised, I know Kev was much the same, that to have low expectations with things like this, that we were never we were never expected to be writers. We were never expected to do yeah. this kind of creative. I literally thing. know about like six other people who read in the area. Like just read one writing. Like, yeah, as in read books, not, yeah, <laughs> read, so not, not book, or porn. Yeah, it's, it's not really popular in the area. Okay. Um, so again, people drop chat, uh, drop questions into the chat. We are here for, um, we've got an hour for this panel. And so we all know that Dawn has Bobby because she has posted it every, everywhere because Bobby is amazing. Um, do any of you else have pets that end up hanging out with you as you write? So I see Always. Jez is nodding. Yeah. I've got, uh, two dogs. I've got a uh, Nuri who's a Benetton Terrier, so it looks a bit like a sheep. So I'm keeping her well away from Kev. And I have uh, yeah. Budweiser Shitstick the Third, who is our puppy, who is named for the fact that he is such a little shit biscuit. And now we have Bobby has decided to grace us with his presence. See, see, that, see this is what's pulling the viewers, Tom. We need we need more birds. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, everyone loves birds. This is a well known fact. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a dog uh, that you know occasionally shows up to stare at me and be like, "Mother, why have you never, why have I never walked outside? Why are you typing at the keyboard? <laughs> I've never felt asphalt beneath my paws, like grass and and the wind through my fur." That's, why that's have you shit. forsaken me? <laughs> why have I? For, I've never felt her. She's never <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me. Never been petted. She's never felt the warmth of, of human touch. <laughs> Bobby's doing a little dance for us. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to head Bob with Bobby, and I'm like, that's not gonna. If we all just start head bobbing on this. <laughs> uh, Kevin, do you have any pets that help grease you and keep you writing? Or um, yes, I've got a Newfoundland. He's really old now, though. He's um, he's fifteen, which is ridiculous. Um, he was he was really poorly about three years ago, twelve, uh, which is a really really good age for a Newfoundland. And we literally we thought he was a goner, and he's just kept going. And like literally every Christmas when it starts getting cold, and that we think he's like on his way out, and he just like pulls through. And he's a, it's it's a crazy thing because he's fifteen and he's his joints are going and his back legs. Um, but his mind's just all there still. He's still trouble. He's still trying to steal stuff off the table. Everything. Um, got two other dogs. We've got a little hybrid border terrier, and we've got a Yorkshire terrier as well. And they just run about the place causing trouble. Awesome. And Dimmy. Yeah, I have a little. Uh, it's it's a mat. Uh, I found him in Greece. It's like a little poodle, like six kilos, and it helps. He helps me a lot uh, because re recently I found, you know, coming out of, uh, of the stupor of not riding, I started uh, going to cafeterias. So I usually take this little thing with me, and the dog sleeps there while I'm writing. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, so uh, we had a question from Brian. So do you feel that sometimes the change in wording for international markets uh, makes your story less authentic? So I, I feel like, because uh, he's he called out Jez with um, gay kebab and fr french fries or heading to the mall. So, and I think Brian is Irish as well. So he kind of yeah. understands the fact that it doesn't always maybe fit. Uh, if anyone wants to start first or I can just call on somebody. Personally, I've quite struggled with trying to like how much of a international, how do you internationalize? And also it's like trying to write from 
a different perspective than your own could be difficult in this regard because uh, it's you know I, I know living in Norway specifically living in small towns which isn't necessarily the most marketable idea to throw in when you're gonna like try and get people to relate to a main character but at the same time I can't really you know relate the American experience that well so it's, it's, it can be it can easily become kind of a issue uh, but I don't try to change the language that much because I'm, I'm lazy. I have my own weird cobbled together English that's like American and British English and you swoosh them together. <clears throat> that's that's what's gonna have to be. I'll, I'll say um, I remember a review I first got um, on one of my first audio books, which um, because I picked a, a US narrator um, and one of the reviews was actually um, I don't understand why you picked a US narrator when the words are British and she didn't she didn't like me using lift instead of elevator and boot instead of you know for or, or bonnet instead of hood and you know things like that um <laughs> which obviously perhaps it came across more in audio but it never I never even thought about it to be fair I just thought the American accent would be way way better than a British one but <laughs> that's uh Demi, have you had any of those challenges? I uh, so w when I started writing, I tried to find myself a very good editor, and she was great help in uh, fixing these things. Because for for me, English is a is a is a strange language either way. Uh, so I had to to pick a lane, and obviously because of the bigger market, we went with uh, with American English. So that's what I'm using, and that's what my editor edits my books on. The the only hard part is. Uh, the, the the freedom units, you know, uh, miles, and I have no idea. N I mean, now I know miles, inches, feet, all that stuff. But I, yeah, I used to have a calculator open. Uh, per eagle. Yeah. <laughs> Simply. Uh, Kevin. Um, I don't feel like it um, spoils anything. There's things we all trip over. I try to use Americanisms for a lot of stuff. I use um, an American editor to make sure everything is uh, for an American audience. Well, I use lots of British words, English words as well. Use lots of um, regional words. And so basically, I make an effort, but I'm, I'm happy using as much British stuff as I can as well. Mm -hmm. I just also want to see as well, Brian, stop asking really long questions to try and hide me and Jez would know what you're <laughs> doing, Jez would know what you're doing. <laughs> I, was just like that. I don't think really? he knows how to write anything short. <laughs> no. I was going to put it part with you. Oh, yeah. We're, we're trying not to. Uh, before I get to Jez, uh, I'm going to just say, uh, I'll do a quick housekeeping, is that we are using Stream StreamYard. And if you click the link in the uh, description, it will just take you to a separate page. You'll grant permissions to StreamYard and it'll redirect you right back to Facebook. And yeah. then we'll be able to see your name on the screen instead of it just saying Facebook user uh, because it will show it for us. Yeah, uh, but that that person, uh, the one that was yelling out each of our names is actually uh, Dawn's uh, audio narrator, Steph. Uh. <laughs> so I, I went to go check out Facebook real Steph. quick just to see who it was. Um, so, cause I'm like, okay, they're yelling all of our names. Uh, okay. So we're going to go to jazz on this one because you were highlighted in it, but I waited till the end for you. So, um, I, it's as much as we would like to be able to write it more colloquial and more local for our characters and so on. The, the truth of the matter is that for me, at least 88% of the market is American. So it's literally a case when I look at how much I make from each of the markets, it's literally 88% is American. So when you break down the rest of the world for 12%, yeah. it just makes sense because when you're used to a word, as Dawn said before, boot, hood, you know, bonnet, whatever, when you're used to something being called that, it's much easier for you to know, to stay in the, the stream of you're reading it and you don't go, that's weird, that, that feels wrong. Yeah. which jars you out of the story and it jars you out of your enjoyment of it. So for us, from a UK point of view, or for me at least, it was a case of when I spoke to my editors, I said I wanted it to be more Americanized. So it, it just 
fits better, really. I would prefer to use real English rather than, you know, this bastardized version that you would have colonials <laughs> use, but um, just accept the fact that you uh, have to use Zs in everything and fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to say, uh, can someone explain the whole greed hamster thing? I'm not, does anyone? It's a Russian thing. It's a case of, uh, it's in Russian books very much that, you know, they're, they're trying to grab everything, trying to collect everything that you possibly can. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so that's, that's a great example of how Jazz and them saying, like, making an Americanized because that's where the bigger reader group based is. I mean, I can, I can understand that because if you're using terms that if I don't understand what a boot is, if it's like, oh, it's a trunk of a car. Okay. Got you. But like some people are just like, why are we putting some, why are we putting a dead body in my shoe? <laughs> huh? Like it just, it, it is jarring and you got to go where your reader base is. Completely I will add one caveat to that, yep. which is every so often when, if you highlight something in one of the books and report it as an error, I have somebody that goes through my Amazon, my books on Amazon, highlights these things and reports it as an error and says things like, the word you want to use is this, or I don't think that this word means what you think it does. And I'll tell you now, nine times out of 10, it does. It means exactly what I think it means. <laughs> so I'm yeah. using the word I intend to use. <laughs> but it's, it's literally a case some people like to add in, you know, they believe that this word should be used and will report it through Amazon. So please, for the love of God, if you see typos and stuff in any of our books, uh, always please write, reach out to us, you know, send us a message on Facebook, uh, yeah. DM us, whatever you want, because if you put too many reports in, whether it's genuine or not, whether it, I mean, some of my stuff that's passed and flagged to me is totally genuine and I'm really embarrassed it gets through. Thank you very much for raising it with me. But if you flag stuff over and over and over and over again, Amazon responds by going, oh, someone must be wrong. I'll press this button here. I won't bother to review it. And put a quality I'd, I'd say it. about 90% is just like bullshit, basically. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. Like, the amount of people, like, things people are flagging up. Um, but yeah, like, there's 10% quality, but totally DM, easy enough to do. Yeah. So, so there. please do reach out to us because we'd always rather fix it. We always rather have the best possible book we can have out there. And if it's a genuine error, I'll be really pleased that you've caught it because you catching it might save me from somebody else being a real dick. So yeah, yeah. leave it in a review. Yeah. Yep. And and that's been talked about forever and say reiterating it here and because especially with I you know coming from an international standpoint where a majority of your readers, like we said, are are US based and they're going off of a certain type of gra grammatical uh usage because even the canadians um i know that they have to deal with that as well with like the ous and favor and color and stuff like that uh, i know that you guys have that too but yeah um so you know you guys all have your contact information out there people can get a hold of you um and it's not like you are these you know, untouchable people that don't want to talk to anyone. You're very charismatic and you're very, you know, well, op you know, you're open to hearing back feedback and stuff. So, um, so they're talking about, I think they're talking about Russian right now in the chat. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just just ignore U.S. flags and reports. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. But unfortunately, oh, Amazon no, doesn't no. ignore that. Yeah. So the thing is that it's it again. It's it's when it's reported to Amazon. Amazon gets the back end reports and the quality assurance stuff, and too many reports of the same things because they keep all track of that. It can get their books pulled, and it, it can be a pain to get them back up if they are enabled. So. Um, you heard it here it's from also a case, just to be clear, Amazon doesn't message us and say, hey, you've got some reports. It's no. a case that we have to go looking for that, and we find it and go, oh, shit. Because somebody's yeah. reported, I had somebody went through and reported floor. Every time I said floor, no, no, you mean ground. And it's like, I, I don't actually. But that... they reported that like 40-odd times in a book. And so had that been a genuine thing, that could have caused real problems. 
So please always reach out to us. Thanks. What does rum really like rum? Hey, um, we 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 went to on a sidetrack to Russia apparently, which I'm just still like pulling, uh, trying to pull us back over to there. Yep, like Kyle said, it's better to sell the author than Amazon. I uh, I'm planning on moving away from this topic now. Um, where I'm gonna go with, I don't know what I'm gonna go with. Birds. <laughs> Birds, yes. Birds. Again when we all got I actually saw a question birds. above that was like, what, which authors have uh, inspired us or like oh. uh, shaped their authorship? That was a question that I was must... like asked right before the one about like uh, Americanization. Okay. Uh, asked by what influence? Uh, oh, what influences have made you the author you are today? Yeah. Is that there we go. Okay, because we got distracted by Bobby uh, and other things. So, Kelly. So, since you yeah. start, let's start with you. Yeah, I, I can I can start. I will gallantly take take screen time, happily, <laughs> you, would, you might say. So, on the author end, I've I've several in the in the lit RPG end or like or the progression fantasy. My probably my biggest inspiration there would be Pirate Abba, Wandering In. That's the author I I take most most because they produce so much ungodly much. Not know if you've read this series, but oh my god, just thousands and thousands of words. It makes me feel bad. Uh, and I mean, I've read lots of other interpreters. So I've read, read Al Alaron, for example, and I, you know, Dungeon Crawler, Car Carl, and He Who Fights with Monsters, lots, lots of different stories. Uh, I take bits and pieces from there, you know, steal from one person is plagiarism. If you steal from many, it's research. So that's, uh, <laughs> You know, that a good one. Uh, other offers, uh, there's a Spanish offer, Il Defonso Falconus. I like Jiran J. Zhao, who is a Chinese Canadian offer. Uh, uh, various, various offers beyond that. You know, I take it, it, you know, from real life interactions. I, I work in library and I'm a, and I work, uh, and I also work as a, as a politician, so that's that's nice areas to take inspiration from. Uh, being 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 trans, being the trans community, there's always weird weird stuff to pick up from there. So inspiration for many many sources, I think, is a is a generally a good idea. At least avoids keeping your work, making your work stale. Oh, and also from role playing games, that's that's a big one. You know, go and play those World of Darkness role playing games, and I just steal stuff. I mean, I mean, I mean, I homage the stuff <laughs> I don't steal totally. Anyway, that, that that should be me. What's your point, Paul? We can't hear you, Jen. Jen's muted. <laughs> well, you know, uh, this is fine. Um, I'm just going to go to jazz now. So, uh, what influences have made you an author that you are today? Um, <laughs> it, it does go well, right. Um, <laughs> Books wise, probably uh, I'll just say that again for some of you books. That's the proper way to say it. Um, the Wheel of Time, for example, I absolutely loved. It's it's one of those seminal works that really just has always been in my library and always will be in my library. Um, looking around, I've got quite a few random books of uh, Peter F. Hamilton, for example. If, if when you look the size of my books, it's because I grew up loving books like Peter F. Hamilton's books. Uh, Terry Goodkind was a few of those, but mostly The Wheel of Time and so on. So it's big, chink, chunky books I love. As to in the genre, very much Aleron and Luke Chimlenko both pushed me to learn to write. I mean, learn because I'd never tried before. So it was very much trying to figure out what planet I was on when I was trying it. And Luke gave me a lot of really good advice. And it was very kind of them to to spend their time as knowing now how much we we need to be in the zone when we're writing and how much you need to be focused like on this world. But then both to take time out of their schedules to message me and to offer advice and suggestions was really, really kind. And it meant a lot to me. All right. Kevin. Um 
Sorry, what was the question? Uh, uh, it is, what influences have made you the author you are today? Right. Um, <clears throat> well, I've always read a lot. <laughs> like, um, oh, David Gemmell. I love David Gemmell. Um, and I read Wheel of Time. It's on the, it's on the shelf back there, but I wasn't as big a fan as like pretty much everyone else. I, I, I genuinely felt the first book was just a pure rip of Lord of the Rings. It's okay, um, mate. You're okay, you're wrong. And then I, I sort of, I, there was lots of entertaining parts throughout, but there was a lot of meandering as well. And I get, I get bored very quickly. Like I, probably why I like David Gemmell because it's pretty much just action, like sort of like plot progression all of the time. Um, so I struggled a little bit with Wheel of Time. I like a lot of uh, historic fiction, like Connie Golden and Bernard Cornwall. But I would say most of my influence, I think, I just because I, I like to focus on characters more than story, really. Um, so I think lots of my influence has just come from life, from people around us, like sort of people who inspirers or people who really irritate us like really come across in me writing and uh i never pick on like specific people but there's there's a big sort of blend of yeah drus 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 my i mean newfoundland is called drus he's a um, he, he suits the name very well or he did while he was still younger uh, Bobby has Lit some RPG. opinions. <laughs> he does. Just, yes. It's gone in the... Lit RPG, I actually don't read that. I read absolutely tons until I started writing. And then I kind of dropped off it a little bit because... I don't know. It's sort of, Because it's in the area I'm right now, I almost feel like I don't want to read it as much. I, I sort of... I more read... Probably read about three Lit RPG books a year now, if I'm honest. And I, I tend to try and stick to the books I like the sort of the other styles. It's hard because I got like most of us addicted to little RPG about uh, about four years ago. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, I get that feeling. Yeah. Hey, uh, Demi. Uh, yeah, I think growing up. So, uh, like thinking back on it, uh, a lot of influences from uh, Japanese RPG because I used to, I mean, I still play a lot of Japanese RPG. And uh, thinking about it as like how has my have my life experiences um, changed the, the the way I write? I think like moving from one country to the other because you 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 are met with some circumstances that you normally don't like. You know, starting a new, making new friends, and like this whole process. Because you know, when you're when you're a teenager or like a, a young person, do you want to be friends? Yeah, sure. But when you grow up, things become more complicated, and like making new friends and like building friendships that do not start when you are below ten, but need to start when you're twenty above, and things like that. Getting to know people, I think that uh, that has shaped how how I'm writing. Uh, now, in terms of um, of genre, I I started writing uh, fantasy because my you know my my mother uh, was writing fantasy, and I was like, yeah, maybe maybe it would be nice, you know, when I when I am a pensioner and I I start writing something, and then it was like, no, you can start now. So I started writing fantasy, and when I was on my second book, I I I was reading a, a manga called The Gamer, which is it's it's like a, a manga. Little RPG, and I was like, man, this this would really be good as a as a novel, and I thought I I, I thought oh, this is the best idea ever. Like, I'm gonna be rich. Everyone will love my books. And then I found out that the, that there is a whole genre called Little RPG, and it exists. So yeah, I started with uh, with Aleron, then uh, Dakota Crowd, James Hunter, all those things. Yeah, but yeah, uh, recently I've also been cutting back on Little RPG and enjoying more of the authors that I used to read uh, younger. Uh, I, I think I started with Lord of the Rings. I love the Drizzt series, uh, Abercrombie, oof, so good. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay. And Don, um, I don't know if Bobby's 
he's, he's in the bathroom. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So influences that have made you the author you are today. Um, I, <laughs> I, I love sci-fi, so I grew up with all sci-fi, um, the sci-fi shows on the telly. My dad used to watch all kinds, um, so I got a lot of influence from them. Um, I'd say sort of like what got me into the, the Pirate Abba was the first one that I kind of listened. I actually broke my arm, <laughs> and um, I actually listened to, the, I think it was about the first six or seven chapters she had on her website at the time. Um, which I listened to them. Don't know who was reading it because obviously it's not it's not them. Um, but that that kind of got me in sort of into the genre. And I was already in the Discord group, but wasn't Discord at the time. But all the groups, Facebook and stuff. Um, and I just kind of progressed from there really. But I do tend to like more sci-fi stuff um, and sci-fi authors. My first book I ever wrote, I was sixteen, and it was sci-fi, which is actually on my shelf, which nobody can ever, ever buy, <laughs> even though it's published, because I, I won't tell them the name. <laughs> but um, I was actually going to throw it in the fire last year. It's like 800 pages um, printed out when I was 16. I was going to bin it. And I was like, oh, I've seen this cover that I liked. I was like, oh, I'm going to buy that. So I just literally put it onto a file. I published it just as it was. I didn't even read through it from, from when I was like 16. <laughs> But that's totally sci-fi based. Aliens come to Earth and sort of like what happens. But yeah. I mean, if you want to give us the blurb and the synopsis, <laughs> no. I mean, I bet we could probably figure out where it yeah, is. You probably could, but it, <laughs> you wouldn't want to buy it. It's trash. <laughs> total teen angst story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, I mean, we, we did influences on what made you the author, but... Now we have uh, games or anything else that has influenced and inspired your work. So I'm going to, I'm broadening it a little bit to anything other than, you know, if you had games, if you have something else, uh, I'm going to start with Demi. Yeah. And yeah. Like I said, Japanese RPG. So, uh, uh, Breath of Fire, Sweet Golden series, the Final Fantasy series, uh, every, every major, uh, uh, JRPG series in Super Nintendo, PlayStation, uh, going back, going forward, yeah, everything. And yeah, of course, then you have Skyrim, which you, you, I, I don't know if there's anyone who's uh, written little RPG and hasn't played uh, Skyrim. Uh, yeah, also like uh, uh, games uh, uh, developed uh, by. Uh, the company that a certain member of the audience is working for. I'm not going to say who. I'm just going to say that here. I, it's really long questions. Uh, yeah, games from that company. I, I, I really love. And also, like narrative uh, heavy uh, games, there was one Detroit uh, Become Human, something like that. I think it was on PS4. Such a great game. Such a great story. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. it for me. Yeah. Uh, Don? Yeah. Wait, my my first computer was like an Apple, which was like a, the, the computer games you used to get, you used to have to wait half an hour for them to load. So literally, um, I used to just come home from school and just play whatever was available, even if there was, I think there was a strategy get aliens game when I was younger that me and my brother used to fight over um, and kind of just sort of like all the really old classics even even progressing to like sega to obviously sonic the hedgehog you know just 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 anything really just just anything that's just fun basic dune i i played the original dunes and think dune and things like that obviously still like more sci-fi based stuff but it's um just those are the kind of things that influenced me through i keep trying to play games now with the guys but time is so hard <laughs> it is uh, Cal? Yes. So I, I will say, I will, I, will, I will make myself unpopular. The, the lit RPG fans they will hate me now. I, I might be the one. I, do, I, I don't like Skyrim. I think it's terrible. Evil game. But you've tried it. I did try it once. Yeah. 10, 12 years ago. Played for a week. Horrible. But uh, so I, I barely count as well. I tried it because it's modeled out as well. But uh, games that inspired me before I rant about Skyrim. I uh Fort the Vegas is a good game. Really heavy on the themes. I enjoy that. I like some of the Telltale games. Uh Knights of the Old Republic 2 
is is a game I uh, have enjoyed. Divinity Original Sin 2 is nice. Um, I've enjoyed uh, Star Wars Jedi Academy has been nice uh, for inspiration. Uh, I've have other sources because it was like other stuff that weren't books. Down Abbey serves as inspiration source for me with my most recent project. I had to go and learn all the all the the terms, you know, all the footnotes and so on. Crusader Kings when when I need to be a psycho and you know I'm glad people can't hear me because you will say really horrible things. Uh, and similar uh i mentioned earlier tabletop role-playing games are probably my biggest like game source of inspiration like that so there there are several games there made the ascension changing the dreaming uh, uh promethean the created many many games uh part-time gods the one i don't like there is dnd so you know i, I just i just take I, I just look at the fantasy community and i'm like come on let's go we'll, we'll, we'll throw that I, I will take i'll see your skyrims i'll, I'll throw down the gauntlet slap him in the face that's that's a very very healthy attitude people and it got me into many dumb arguments but yeah that should be a decent list i think okay jazz you filthy animal kill him <laughs> you need to start with that you don't like skyrim you i don't, I don't like skyrim it's 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 shallow it's it, it is so <gasps> it, it's wide <laughs> as an ocean but then you dip, dig deep in, and it's like, oh wait, this is this is where the mobs are. You're to be. you're digging deeper, Cal. I'm just. <laughs> but Morrowind, okay. Like, I've got Morrowind, it. Yeah, yeah, Morrowind, Morrowind's nice, but here's Eve at the end. Festa hasn't made a good game in years. They made Fallout Four, and they were like, "Ha ha, this is a good game." <laughs> they fought that. They 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 went ironically out. And it's like this 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 is our baby show it to the world and they've just been like putting skyrim out in new versions for like 15 years now just skyrim reboot remaster it's now on the smart fridge play it on the fridge people yeah anyway, skyrim. i love skyrim but it's i mean fallout 3 and 4 were basically skyrim with guns so you know rather than fallout which was definitely better um i play all sorts of different games i i love civilization love the civilization games i've got my steam library up there uh cyberpunk dragon age dune all the elder scrolls obviously uh, galactic civilizations frostpunk uh, loads of different games uh playing eso at the moment sort of getting into that um i <laughs> I love all sorts of role-playing games, and not just in the bedroom, but on the computer. And uh, <laughs> I knew I'd get some looks there. <laughs> uh, just, uh, it's a, it's a little escape. That's the whole thing for us. I think that we we really tend to. I moved into lit RPG because it was it was like gaming, but that I could do in socially acceptable places. Like if I was when I work in IT, if I turn up to a client's office. And I'm working away and doing whatever job I'm doing, and then they come across the scene, he's sort of hammering away on the keyboard. It, as long as I've angled the the screen so that they can't see it, they don't know that I'm actually writing a story. While if I'm going die, 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 and I've got a controller in my hand, it pretty much gives the game away. Yeah, more or less. Hey, Kevin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, games, uh, do, games or anything that inspire your work. Uh, certainly not ESO as Brian's alluding to now. So yeah. I, I got sidetracked while he was trying to explain to us about um, a frog race in ESO. <laughs> Jez, I can see you, mate. What? <laughs> you know, his message wasn't that big that time. Um, but so, come on, games. I like playing games. I've played games the whole time. Would I say they inspired anything I've ever written? Probably not. They sort of, I think the reason I love lit RPGs, I love the stats, I love the quantifiable um, powers, like sort of how you can see progression, like in that form. I think it's great. Like it's it's one of my favourite things about it. Um, and obviously I love games for that same reason, that progression where you're constantly moving forward. There's never any meandering or anything like that. You're, you're always sort of aiming for a goal. But uh, maybe he's 
maybe Fallout 4, it's probably my favourite recent game. I um, I spent a lot of time on Age of Empires. I think it was two. It, it was yeah, the one yeah. before they brought all the before they brought all the gods in. Um, I thought that ruined the, the franchise. But yeah, I played played loads. I used to love um, Tony Hawk's skateboard. I spent hours and hours and hours on that thing. Um, Wolfenstein as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if any have inspired us. Maybe it's Resident Evil a little bit in the yeah Original in the uh, yeah definitely yeah that's about it I'm done okay carry on <laughs> so uh, we are going to just wrap up uh, because we did start a little late we are pushing a little bit past the hour so. Again, this is the EU crew panel. We have a channel in the dis the lit RPG um, the Guild of Econ Discord. Uh, Geneva has posted that link, and she probably will again. So you can continue on, ask questions. The authors will be there after this panel has wrapped up. Uh, they will be there probably for the rest of this the guild the con as well. And you can ask questions, chat with them. They probably will get back to you, you know, 12 hours after you asked your question because of time differences. <laughs> but um, no, we're not, that that would be the down under folk. Uh, you guys are only like five hours to 10 hours ahead of people. So <laughs> again, we have uh, takeovers happening on the Facebook page. There will be another panel at 1 p.m. I believe it is. Uh, yeah, there is a panel at 1 p.m. as well, and plus a few others today. So feel free to come back, see another panel. And I'm going, we're going to wrap up with um, everyone kind of reintroducing themselves. If any other final words that you want to say, uh, we've got a couple of minutes for each person to talk if you want. Uh, so don't, don't go running off with the conversation for the next 10 to 15 minutes, but... You know, uh, but yeah, we'll start off with uh, Demi for final introduction words and what series you are known, you know, what you have for your series. Um, yeah, um, my, my series is uh, about an astrophysicist who was caught in uh, my the series that I'm writing now, right? Uh, who was caught in the middle of uh, apocalypse in, uh, in Munich. Uh, while Oktoberfest was on, so there's a lot of uh, expenses that I can uh, uh, justify for tax reasons, uh, you know, as research, traveling to uh, castles in Germany, which is why I'm writing this book, right? And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, this book will come out uh, sometime early uh, next year, and I don't know. I don't have uh, much more to say other than, you know, be be kind to each other. If you have uh, any questions, just send us a message. I don't know any author that I've ever sent a message, either as a reader or, or as an author that hasn't replied, I mean, in, in LitRPG. And yeah, be kind to each other. <laughs> uh, Don? Sorry, I saw the comment from Brian, who was offering to help you uh, research the pub. <laughs> I think we'd all do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. It's a great excuse. Um, yeah, so it's just been great to be here and meet everyone and chat again. Um, just keep an eye out for me for next year, really, because I'll hopefully be making a nice comeback. That's all I can say. Hell? Yeah, I'm, uh, nice to meet everyone. I, I look forward to my next panel where I can continue to same, shamelessly promote myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm Guillotine Charm, Guillotine Charm on, on Royal Road. And I have my novels there. You should come, definitely go read them. I review them. You get five stars and, and start start flame wars in the comment section. I'm, I'm up for everything. I will I will happily you know be be dragged into any offer scheme. I have no shame. No standards, just back me in. I'm, I'm, I'm shameless. Listen to him. Anyway, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, I'm saying nothing. Um, so, well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, first of all, Jen, for, for doing this, for moderating it. It's been good fun, this. And thanks, everybody else. I've enjoyed yourself. Um, I'm, obviously, I'm Jez. I occasionally abuse people. Uh, no, sorry, I, I, 
I write occasionally. I regularly abuse people. That's it. I'm kinky. Um, yeah, I'm just here for the shits and giggles, really. And uh, because I didn't demonstrate this one earlier on while I did other people, this is written by this reprobate here. <laughs> he got the uh, he got the point right. I know. You have no idea how much <laughs> I've <laughs> that out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, right, and Kevin. Um, yes, thank you, Jen, for great moderating. It's been been great to be involved. I'm Kev. I'm Jez Casual's older brother. I wrote Bright Sausage, and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and look after and look after yourselves. I thought it was soft sausage you wrote. Yeah, well, just what you know, him. <laughs> it's only got two reviews. No <laughs> 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 bullshit. <laughs> well thank you guys again for coming on uh, I, mean, I know that it's early evening afternoon for you guys and really do appreciate you guys coming on and, and sharing with, with everyone here uh, and we will see you on other panels as well again like I said there's a discord feel free to ask questions of the authors they will be there to, they can answer and they can have a more in-depth conversation with you as well and if you have anything you can always reach out to them as you heard so thank you thank you guys thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.